Have you ever wondered what it's like to homestead? Well, today I'm gonna take you along with me on a typical Saturday as I feed the animals, milk the cow, check on the garden, and we're gonna do it all from my point of view. I look ridiculous. Gotta get my overalls. I must warn you, the homestead is a bit of a mess right now because it's spring and we got a lot of projects going on. Oh, gotta get chicken scraps. These are for the chicken. They're giving us lots of eggs right now. We built these really nice porch railings all the way around and they've got these little gates. We still need to stain a lot of them and then we gotta still stain the deck itself. Ah, it's a beautiful day. We got the chicken scraps. I'm coming chickens, I'm coming. Wait, I gotta let the dogs out. Hey puppy, hey puppy. Down, get down, this isn't for you. Come on. We built this really nice chicken coop. We have a video on that. It's got little nice Dutch doors. Yeah. There you go, chickens. Let me put it on your compost pile. Oh yeah. They like those chicken scraps. If you're wondering what this is, that's gonna be in a later video and those are some extremely big plans, but basically we're taking power from the transformer over into the barn. Our uh, pear trees are looking beautiful. Here's a look at the trench. All the way from over there down. We already backfilled the road, but there's no meter, there's no electricity yet. Has to be inspected. Recently, we went and picked up a ton of trees and we've got some cherries, we've got a plum tree, uh, we've got some poplars, we've got uh, white pines, cedars, hemlock, I believe. And then we've got like blueberry plants, gooseberries, uh, maybe a few other things, but we got quite a bit. Oh, we got some strawberries in there. Yeah, we got a bunch of stuff. Isn't it? Come here, daddy. Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Good boy. All right, we gotta get some more corn. Well, corn and soybean meal. This is pig feed. Alrighty. Oh yeah, and in here, this is our old chicken coop. This is all gonna get ripped out of here at some point. We have, that's gonna all get ripped out. This is gonna all move. This is kind of just storage for now, but we have big, big plans for this. This whole building in here and upstairs. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna share too much, but big plans. Hey there, little chicks. These are a bunch of barred rocks and Americanas. And we, we got Americanas and Bard Rocks, but then we got that one. Woo. We got that orange one. Not too sure what she is, but these are our future layers. And for now, they're staying in here. They're almost big enough to go put with the other chickens. <sighs> Let's go feed some pigs. Day. Oh yeah. Eat bigs. Eat cash. Right now we have to keep the gate closed for the barn because this little guy keeps running around outside of his pen, so oh hey there pigs. Hey there, Mary Gold. 
There you go, Marigold. Hello, Penelope. Hello. There you go. Let's see if I can get it. There you go, Buzzy. Oh, we have some little piglets, by the way. No piglets from these two yet. I'm hoping she's pregnant. I'm hoping Marigold's pregnant. She's definitely pregnant. There you go, Banana Bee. Show you guys the little piglets. Eee, little pig. Young piglets are pretty shy, but as they get older, they'll get a lot more curious and they'll enjoy the pets like Bezzy does here. There you go, Bezzy. Out of this litter, we had three girls and four boys, so seven total. Yeah, gay. Come here, let me give you a pet. Let me give you a pet. All right, we'll leave him. Hey, buddy. Hey, bud. We recently castrated him, so he probably doesn't like us very much right now. <laughs> Let's get these guys some water. Eat here, buddy. Turn the water on. Rosie and the calf are doing good. We're milking her like crazy. She gets milked every single day. Yeah, right, Rosie. And she's just waiting to get milked. She's always excited because she gets her alfalfa. Man, this little calf causes a ruckus. Gonna fluff their hay. And I gotta get hay for Buddy. There you go, Buddy. There you go, bud. Hey, bud. Little guy's getting his horns. You can see his little horns popping up. That should be good for breakfast. Yep, the calf's doing good. Rosie's doing good. She's producing a ton of milk for us. Even with calf sharing right now, we're probably getting, I don't know, two and a half gallons. We're gonna milk her here in a bit after we go feed the other pigs, but we'll see how much we get. If you're wondering, he's gonna be our steer. So he he's beef. If we had a heifer, we would we would have kept her as a milk cow too, but he is an A2A2, but he, uh, yeah, we don't want a Jersey Bull. We experienced that and they were very mean. So we're, he's gonna be our beef. Well, everybody's fed. Let's go feed the other pigs and make sure to turn the water off. I can't tell you how many times I just go straight to the door and forget to turn this off. Good job.
sure is muddy. Eat it, pigs. Eat it, pigs. Ah, yep, yep, yep. This is my favorite part of the property right here. That's the neighbors, but we hope to purchase that someday. All this stuff that's cut is ours. And you can see the pigs have been going to town. We've been moving them through the winter and still moving them through the spring. But you see all this water right here? See how wet that is? It's like that all year round. And so somewhere up in here, we have a spring and that's something you got to dig up a little bit and find the spout for but i think someday i probably will go ahead and do that but we'll stop messing around and feed these guys and then after i want to show you what these pigs have done to our fields over there on the other side where they've already been there you go pigs hang on this way I know a lot of people comment and give me flack for throwing the feed right on the ground, but for these guys, I'm willing to waste some because their job is to till this all up, turn this into dirt and, you know, really nice soil so that way things can regrow. And you'll see when we go down and check the other side of the field that it is actually working. We do about a half a scoop per pig each, uh, half a scoop per pig morning, and then half a scoop per pig at night. So we get, we do two for the four pigs. There you go, Mike. So this is our feeder pig right here. No name. That's Penelope's old piglet. That's Mike, that's our boar, of course. And these two were raising up for uh, somebody else for feeders as well. So, there you go, big. What are you doing, Prince? What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? I told you to stay. I told you to stay, buddy, huh? Huh? What are you doing? What are you doing? You just wanna hang out? Come on. All right, let's go take a look. Let's get over our spring here, our natural spring that the pigs have muddied up. But look how much water just in that one spot. And I think there's a few of them that do that, but right here, it's so heavy. It hasn't rained in a while. Enjoy pigs. So we, we fence off a certain area and you can see they've just gone nuts on this. This is perfect. Like there's no craters. It's just like a light, light till. And see, look at this. Here's another one. Look at that fresh water sitting there. And I'm telling you, this isn't a runoff. This is, this is coming out of the ground. It's like that year round. We have these little huts for the pigs. We obviously use the single strain electric wire. We got their water, eh, which I need to fill on the daytime or evening feeding. And then we've got our solar electric panel, which is doing so well because the sun's coming up and this spot gets tons of sun. So this right here, this area is where they were last. And you can see a lot of it has regrown just in the last, you know, week or two. But I wanna go see over here, which is like, you know, a month or more since they've been there. And this has been going off. I'm so excited about this. So hang on a second. Let's go back because I need to show you what all of this looked like before the pigs got to it. So on the other side of this fence is my neighbor's property. And all of this looked the same. This right here looked like this. Brambles, weeded, tons of trees, like little tiny saplings. Not that I don't want the saplings, I want the saplings, but when you leave 
an area to grow, it turns into that. And that isn't good for our operation. So we've got our pigs, we're moving them around in these little paddocks. And you, you could probably see like, here's a paddock, there's a paddock, there's a paddock, there's a paddock, and now they're in that paddock. But we're moving them around and this grass is really starting to take off in certain areas and it is just awesome. You can see where we've driven, it kind of beats it up a little bit. So we've stopped driving this side, but look at this right here. Oh, it's just beautiful. These grasses have not had an opportunity to come up in probably a decade. It's just amazing. And we still have, like if, if I get down here, you can see the brambles that still grow and that's okay. We're gonna chop these fields as we continue this and I'm not too worried about it, but look at this grass. Oh, that's just beautiful. You know, when we started this, I wasn't sure how well it was gonna do. We've done this on other parts of the property, but I, I thought I was gonna seed this pasture, but I decided not to. And man, I am so glad I didn't. Cause it's just come up with all the, the seeds that are sitting in that seed bed. Isn't that right, buddy? Look at that grass. You can eat that grass and then you can throw it up. Well, anywho. This back 10 acres is just gorgeous. We want to build a house up here someday, get away from the road, get away from, you know, seeing any neighbors. We just want to have the peace and quiet back here and just the birds. And one of the things I love about it back here is we have these conifer trees that we get to see. We don't have any conifers on the front of the property. I'm sure that was tilled and, and, and you know, grown for grain for a long time but back here we actually have some of these conifers and being from washington it's a nice little reminder of where we came from i always come through and check the fence line make sure they haven't thrown any grass clods on the fence they'll do that sometimes there you go mike there you go buddy there you go mikey buddy all right we gotta go back and milk Rosie. Look at all that. Oh boy. I love it. Hoop. All right. You probably can't see anything out of there because <laughs> this thing's muddy. Look at this Polaris. Look how muddy this Polaris is. Oh, it needs a bath. Wow. It's been so incredibly muddy this year. It's been unbelievably muddy. Oh, look at it. Oh, it's beautiful. All right. Whew. All right, pups, you gotta go kennel. Come on, kennel up. Good dogs. These are such good dogs. These are such good dogs. We gotta go milk Rosie. And we have a bit of a system for milk and Rosie now that seems to work pretty well. And I'll explain that as we move along on the process of milk and rosy but we've been growing stuff like crazy look at all these starts we had a little bit of an algae problem but we didn't realize we were supposed to take the tops off so this one seems to be doing pretty good we got peppers and onions and but sadly this one down on the bottom we have a little bit of cabbage but this one died because i think it was just too much moisture so we're gonna have to redo all those sadly all right we gotta wash some dishes here <laughs> and this might get cut out because this isn't interesting at all but we got our two buckets and we wash these every single day we take the washing to the milk machine instead of the milk machine to the kitchen or to the laundry room because it's just so much easier that way we got our freezers full still we got some pork we got a ton of like ground beef ground beef ground beef at the bottom uh last night we had some of these sirloin tips. Oh, these were so good as steaks. And we got some sausage, all kinds of stuff. This is our steer from last year. And we got a bunch like pork chops and whatnot from our pig as well. And we still have whole chickens. We have a few turkeys, maybe three or four turkeys left. And a bunch of stuff in here as well. 
as I break something and a bunch of stuff in here. I'll tell you what, you own a homestead, you do a lot of dishes, especially if you got a milk cow. Oh my goodness. We wash so many different things multiple times a day. And we take our buckets and head out to Rosie. It's supposed to be, I think 72 degrees today. And it is really warming up from when I came out here at the beginning of the video to now. I feel like I could get out of these overalls, but when I first came out, it was really cold. Chickens have been going crazy on their compost pile and they've been loving their new chicken coop. We just love that thing. It turned out so good. We love that chicken coop. If you're interested in building a chicken coop like that, we made plans for it. We sell them on Etsy. There's a link in the description for that. Hey there, Rosie. Our system for this is that we bring the wash station to the actual milking machine because I don't like it. See these little wheels on here and stuff? You see those little wheels? It's just so difficult to move it around. It's just better to leave it here, cover it so nothing gets on it. And we found that to be pretty good, pretty clean. We bought some shackles, but Rosie thankfully doesn't need them. Let's see. Eh, we'll put some more, some more alfalfa in there for her. We just got pure alfalfa. We don't feed her any grains or anything. So this is her treat and oh man, she goes crazy for it. Buddy likes it too. Maybe we'll give Buddy a little bit. Here you go, buddy. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, okay, okay, okay. There you go. Rosie saw it too. But Rosie, you get it every single day. All right, Rosie. Come here. Let me get this on you. I know you're not a fan. Come here, come here. There you go, Rosie. Hang on, give me a moment. Jeez. Come on. Oh yeah, that's a good Rosie. You just always wait for me. Good girl, Rosie, come in. Come on, Rosie. Let's go, Rosie. She's pretty good at this thing. She's used to it. I'm trying to get the halter off of her before she gets in the stanchion. There we go. She just goes right in we close this up. There you go, Rosie. There you go. I'm sure her little calf's gonna pay us a visit. Let's see, how dirty are you looking today? Hey, not too bad, Rosie. Not too bad. All right. We got our soapy one. We'll grab that out of there. You know, Rosie doesn't kick very much, hardly at all, usually, but she does not like this part. Yeah, see, she's not a fan of it. She doesn't ever kick hard, which is nice. We don't have a hard kicking cow. We just have, she's just like, oh man, quit pulling on my teats, so. If you're wondering why we went to a uh, milk machine, because she's got these really small teats and I, and I have to milk like this. You'll see, I'll do it for a second, but I'm sorry, Rosie, I know you don't like this part. I gotta clean you off or you get mastitis and the milk's all gross. I'm sorry. Well, we clean her off really, really nice, get rid of it. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. Get rid of any of that stuff. Get rid of any of that stuff. All right. And then we take our dry towel, dry off my hands, and we dry her off real good. <coughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Cut it out, you're getting yourself dirty. All right, now we're gonna do a mastitis test. She's pretty good, we, we test her quite a bit, but only takes a few. All 
All right. Let me take it to the line, which is right there. I guess if the one of these gets hard and kind of more thick, then it shows that she has mastitis. But she doesn't have any have any issues and hasn't since we started milking her, so that's good. Now we're ready to milk. This is our milk machine. We just bought a cheap one from Vivor, so. Ugh. It's pretty nice. We keep it really, really clean out here. I just gotta dump some of the old water out of there. We don't want that in the milk. Rizzy. Bit the power button. I'll tell you what, Rosie likes getting hand milked, or likes getting machine milked more than she does hand milked. But I think it's because she's got such small teats, it's so hard to hand milk her. And we've been machine milking for quite a while now. Hopefully she doesn't kick me. She doesn't usually, but you know, it's on camera now, so she might. This is the tricky part. You gotta get both of these on, hit the button. Hope she doesn't kick me. And the milk's flowing. There you go, Rosie. I got one more to get on. It's a bit difficult because you gotta, there's only a certain amount of suction time that you have before it lets go. There you go, Rosie. Thank you for not kicking me yet. So this is the milk machine, it's pretty cool. It's got two suction lines that go in, which are these little tubes here, these smaller tubes, and that pulsates. You can hear it in the back, the ch -ch -ch -ch. it pulsates everything. And then the milk comes down the tube into these bigger tubes, and you can see it popping in there, and it'll go down in the tube all the way down, back to the milk machine, and into the bucket. Pretty neat. This uh, speeds up the milking process quite a bit. Seems to be doing okay, huh? <laughs> yeah, that calf is funny. He just loves coming out here in the bar to be able to go run back and forth. There he goes. He's giving the pigs a little show. Add a girl, Rosie. Add a girl. Our little steer over there, Rosie's calf, gets usually gets the first, the front two quarters here, so you can see they're just not as much as the back one here. But we'll probably get two gallons, maybe two and a half gallons. Sometimes we get three gallons, but it looks like he got the fronts pretty good today. So. And I always pinch these because you can feel the milk coming down. You can see when one's empty. Sometimes we'll actually calf separate him at night. And uh, we'll usually get like five to six gallons in the first morning milking. And uh, man, that's a lot of milk. So we'll do that every once in a while if we need to catch up. But I'm okay calf sharing and taking uh, you know two two and a half gallons a day that's more than we need anyway so and the pigs get a ton of milk hey Rosie yeah a girl I'll tell you what we were blessed 
with an amazing bill cow. She doesn't kick. And when she does, you can see when I was just wiping her off, she'll lift her leg a little bit, but she doesn't kick. Like you'll see some videos of them just hurting people with their kicks. Rosie has never done that. And we haven't had any issues with that at all. So the only annoying thing is sometimes she'll decide to lift her leg up and kick one of these off and then they all fall and it's a disaster, but it doesn't hurt anybody. It just, you know, we just have to clean everything off and sanitize it. But, oh yeah, Rosie is such a good milk cow. So thankful. If you wanna see the video of this little guy being born, you can find it on our YouTube channel or I'll probably put it up here in the corner somewhere. Yeah, Rosie didn't have much milk today. He got quite a bit of it. You can see she's starting to empty. The, light, the thing I like about this milk machine is that it milks her out completely. Like there's no milk left after that, which is really good for her and really good for her milk production. Yeah, the girl Rosie. You know, it's so interesting going from living a life where I don't drink raw milk and don't really know much about it to drinking it every single day, multiple times a day. We were big milk drinkers before, but we just never drank raw, raw milk from a cow. And uh, it's so, it's just so interesting. There's just the propaganda around raw milk. You, we all feel like it's some unsafe thing, like it's the actual raw milk, but it's the handling of it that becomes unsafe. So, you know, the modern dairy industry is brutal and uh, very, very dirty. And these cows are just living in their own filth for the most part, 24 seven, their entire life. And that's what makes raw milk dangerous, not because milk from a cow is dangerous, but that's what we all think. That's what we've all grown to, you know, we were raised to think, so it's too bad, but. She's almost done here. It's slowing down. And she's pretty, pretty empty bag there. All right, that's it. So we take this and we pull this plug. And that will slowly drop those off of there. And we set that there, turn it off, and we'll worry about Rosie before we worry about the milk. We usually get Rosie back in place. Hey there, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you. Thank you. Man, they always look so skinny after they have their calves, but she'll get there. All right, Rosie, this is your least favorite part of the day. We've got to get this halter on Rosie somehow. <laughs> she does not like getting this on. She'll, she'll literally keep her head down knowing that I'm trying to get the halter on. We'll give you a second. We'll give you a little moment. There you go. Let me get it on you. See, she just looks away. Come here, Rosie. Come here. Come here, Rosie. Come here. Come here, Rosie. Come here. There we go. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you get it every single day of your life. You'll be okay. All right, come on, Rosie. Come on, Rosie. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, Rosie. Good girl, there you go. Come on. She's always so motivated to get there, but so unmotivated to go back. Come on, Rosie. You got some of that in your, in your pile over there. Let's go. You stay, buddy. Come here, Rosie. Come on. Come on. Let's go, let's go. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. That's a good girl. I really like this cattle feeder, but the one thing it does do is it rubs off the hair on her neck, which isn't a big problem right now because we're going into summer, but 
I don't know, maybe we'll put poles or something that doesn't do that. I'm not sure if there's a way to change that, but well, that's milking. It's as easy as that. We obviously have to take the milk inside and we need to clean it. So we're not done yet, but yeah, we maybe got two gallons today. Nothing too crazy. The one thing is this thing didn't come with a lid, so I ordered some little stretchy lids to put on this, but for now I just kind of lift it up and hang on to it. See that milk in there? Oh yeah. That's good stuff. We found this method to take everything to the milker and then take the milk to the house to be the easiest because over this gravel driveway it's so difficult to wheel that thing over and this is just this is much easier so yep this is farm life carrying milk across the driveway trying not to spill it trying to be clean once we get those lids it'll be a lot nicer 847 we might be done by nine o'clock First things first, wash the old hands. This is what a laundry room looks like when you homestead. It's just a mess. <laughs> She's got stuff everywhere. So we got our big gallon jars here. And then we got our little funnel. We've got a filter there. And then we've got this little ring that pushes that filter down. Oop. Pushes that filter down into place. And that's what filters the milk. And we take the milk. And we pour it in. The other thing I like about the milk machine is like no hair gets in the milk. You know, no little droplets of anything. It just stays nice and clean. And we got this other one. Fill this one up too. Uh, maybe we got two gallons. I don't know if that's two gallons. Let's see. Uh, nah, maybe a gallon and three quarters. Maybe. Put our lids on, and then we're gonna mark this. What is today's day? Today is March, or is today April? Nope. Today is March 30th. We found the milk lasts about a week, and then after that it starts to taste a little funky, so. But with our milk, we take it, and we put it right into the freezer the big freezer and we let it freeze or we let it sit in the freezer for about two hours and that gets it down to temperature really really quick because that's the most important thing is you want this milk to drop temperature really fast set a timer for two hours and I got to set my timer for two hours because <laughs> if I don't set a timer I'm gonna forget about it and it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna freeze which we've done before so and that makes the milk kind of weird, weird texture. And so we got more dishes here. You know, when you clean everything right away and all that, everything stays nice and clean. But like if I was to leave this and come back to it later, it's going to be kind of gross and we don't want that. So we just wash everything pretty much right away and it stays nice and clean. And we even take our bucket which is a little difficult in this area. And we'll rinse out everything in there. Get some soap in there. 
and we wash it. Like I said, when you wash everything every day and you keep it really clean, this stuff stays nice and clean and it's, it, you know, there's no scrubbing. It's just hitting soapy water everywhere and cleaning everything off. I know some people do a teat dip, so somebody might say like, oh, why didn't you teat dip? I don't know. We keep Rosie so clean and we haven't had any issues with mastitis yet with how we're doing it, so. We're just gonna keep doing it the way we're doing it. I know everybody's got their own methods for things, but now we take this back to the barn and it's gonna get cleaned again, actually, and you'll see. All right, well, we cleaned out our bucket already, but we basically put it back and then the thing we need to clean out is these suction, these little suction cups, the tube, and then the top. So that's why we have these buckets of soapy water and really, really hot water. So basically we take the top off, turn the unit on, and we set the cups in here and I wash the cups. Ooh, that's hot water. That stuff would burn you if you kept your hand in it. And that forces the soap back in there in the rinse water, which again is extremely hot. And that basically cleans all this, cleans out the tube, and we haven't had any issues. Like we don't have buildup in here. It stays nice and clean. And we blow air through it to get the, the other moisture out of it. And then we take our little towel and we really just do this because sometimes we get birds flying in here and stuff and we don't want anything on the milk machine so we cover it up thank you rosie hey there little buddy see you later pigs well i'm gonna head inside and eat my breakfast well we have some seeds we need to plant today i'll show you what happened so right here, we had uh, some celery and onions that we planted and oh, this stuff did not do very well. I think we left the dome on too much and everything just kind of molded and it was, yeah, I think it's just disease. So we have a couple that are in there, but you can see they're just gonna end up dying. So this whole tray is just kind of kaput. I don't think it's gonna do very well. We have a bunch of mint as well that kind of did the same thing, so. We didn't do very well on these ones, but on these trays, we're doing much better. These are the trays from uh, Bootstrap Farmer, so they're doing much better. You can see this one, this is Ashland's Flowers. This got a little bit of algae, but we take we took the lid off and those are doing much better. And uh, over here, we've got uh, more flowers, like some marigolds and things like that. And of course, sweet pepper and onions. So today we're gonna grow we're gonna regrow our celery. And so we got some more celery. We've got uh, sage and thyme that have planted here. And on this side, we're gonna do celery. Probably not the whole thing. I think maybe this, this side will do celery because we're gonna probably do another planting for the fall as well. We're still learning how to do this whole seed starting thing and having a garden in general, but we got a bunch of seeds in there. So in case we make mistakes again, but we're gonna, I'm gonna probably wet this soil a little bit. That's the joy of gardening is that when you make these mistakes, it's easy to just replant. All right, let's get our seeds out. These things are so small. We'll plant a few in each tray here or in each pod. We had good germination on the last celery, but I think we left the dome on too long. All right. I think we'll keep the dome off on this one. This is our spare bedroom where we have our plants and the copper's asleep in here. Hey dear, baby. Hey dear, baby. But Ashlyn's got our plants. She's got this nice little binder, which I think is so cool because it keeps all of our plants nice and organized and whatnot so we'll add our our uh, celery in here there we go pretty neat little binder i think that's a really cool idea she's been this garden is way more organized this year because of her so that's awesome 
So today is Saturday and on my Saturdays, I kind of get to do whatever I want, whether that's like working in the garden. Uh, usually I try to step away from any projects like doing the electrical and working on what we're doing in that barn, which I'm, I almost slipped. I'm not gonna tell you yet. Or, you know, the other project that's going over there, I'm not gonna tell you that either. But today I'm doing something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while and we had made some garden gates in our garden there and then also on the chicken coop we had built some trim out of these fence post boards like the little picket fence posts and we have some of these left over and so I've cut all of these up and what we're going to build is we're going to build I think I have seven sets there we're going to build little tiny birdhouses we have one sitting in the garden over there on the corner but I want to build quite a few of these we want more birds and the hole here is about an inch and a half wide I think that's small enough so it doesn't keep the mean birds or so I think that's small enough so it doesn't let the mean birds in but yeah so we're gonna build some of these all right there's a birdhouse I got some of the pins poking through so I'll have to beat those down but two done so we built eight birdhouses and we're gonna put these all along the fence here and we're gonna space them pretty good because we don't wanna keep them too close. And we already have one right there so we might put one down by the gate, one at the end over there, maybe one further on that fence. We'll probably have to see because the cows graze that, they might knock this off. And then probably along that fence and we'll have to see. We'll have to set them down and see where we want them. We'll grab four of them. So I definitely want one in this far corner over here. And after we do these birdhouses, I'll show you what we got going on in the garden. So we'll put one up right there, I think. There's the old one. I'm thinking we move this nasty barbed wire and we put this one right there. And we'll maybe put one right there. This was the old hitching post for the Amish family that lived here. You can see it's pretty beat up, but we really like it, so we left it. So you got all these new birdhouses. Maybe it'll attract some new birds. We have we already have a lot of birds out here, especially cardinals and stuff, but we kind of want those smaller birds, so hopefully those holes are perfect size for them, and hopefully we get a lot more bird activity as we're sitting on the porch. Well, let's go check out the garden. We still have a bunch of stuff to plant, like all those trees you saw earlier in the video, and of course all the starts, and we have so much to plant. This garden's gonna be full this year. Last year we didn't quite fill it, but this year we're filling it up. So we'll start down here at the end. This is where we got white onions, red onions, and we got our yellow onions down in here. We got cabbage growing, broccoli, cauliflower right there, and then a ton of garlic. We're trying out this landscape fabric and so far so good, I really like it. We haven't had anything come up here, but we did have some onions popping up. You can see one down there. The yellow onions are coming up pretty good and some of these white onions are coming up as well, which is awesome. So seems to be working well. I wasn't sure if it was gonna shade anything out or not, but seems like it's working good. So we're really excited for that. We came and we planted some uh, Concord seedless grapes there, Concord seedless, and then all the way down we've got blackberries and then raspberries, kind of where all the bark is. This garden's gonna be totally full. So we're gonna have three more rows of landscape fabric right here and right where this hay's at, right where this hay's at, we've got our red, gold, and russet potatoes all the way down there. We planted them pretty tight, but um, we're hoping that this mulch will keep some weeds out, but also like help with bug issues. Hopefully it, it uh, allows good bugs in, but that left side's probably just gonna be corn for the most part. And then eventually we'll have a row on the back that's gonna be blueberries. I will say, even in this wind, I wasn't sure how this hay mulch was gonna hold up. It's been so windy today, like you can tell in the video, and this stuff hasn't moved hardly at all. It, it almost like locks in there because it's all intertwined. I just love this chicken coop. Man, this thing is so nice. We're so happy with it. Ooh, I should probably water these. I should definitely water those. I come in here once a day, check to see if there's eggs. 
feed the chickens. Here you go, chickens. We've got this hen gear roll away nest box, but they don't want to lay in it so much, or at least, at least not four of them. Hey, buddy. Which is kind of annoying. I'm trying to get them to use it. I even took off the red net on the front. Most of the eggs that are in here are from me putting them in here. There's a couple chickens that do lay in here, but not all of them, which is too bad. This is a couple days worth of eggs. So it's just about time to let the cows out. Hey, busy. Hey, biggies. Man, you always make such a mess in your pen. You need more straw already. Hey, little pigs. Hey, little pigs. Hey there, busy. There you go. We'll just give Rosie this whole thing. <clears throat> well, I probably got hat hair from wearing that thing all day, but that's our Saturday. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different look, kind of see the world through my eyes for the day. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a good day. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.